Now before we get into actually building it, I'll just quickly tell you how I did the wooden border. Now most people when they do wooden borders, they just paint them black to frame the scene, which is all well and good, you can do that, not a problem. But I wanted to make a feature of the wood because I had some nice looking pine and I could get a relatively decent green match around the whole thing. So what I did was mitered the corners, then I did a round over on the front edge. The back edge is a 6mm rebate or rabbit, wherever you are in the world. The reason I did that is because I'm going to put an acrylic case over this. And because I'm putting an acrylic case over this, I needed to protect the foam on the inside as well. So I put some 1mm thick balsa on the inside, and you'll see that later on when I start doing the base. Now the wood itself, I gave a timber prime. Well, first I sanded it to 240 grit. Then I used some timber primer. Then a walnut stain. Uh, boil linseed oil and then a paste wax. Now the way that I finished this wood gives it absolutely no protection at all from scratches or impacts or anything like that. It does make it resistant to um, liquids but that's it. If I was going to make it um, resistant to impacts and scratches and things I would use either a varnish, a polyurethane, uh, shellac and I think Danish oil also does it but I'm not 100% sure on that and the reason that I didn't use any of those is because I don't really like the look of them uh, a varnish can work if you do it right and sand in between coats and everything but yeah I didn't I didn't really want to do that I just wanted a nice satin sort of finish on it and I found that Oils and waxes make the wood look much nicer, even with a stain on it. So that's how I did the wood. And yeah, I guess we should get into actually building the damn thing now. Alright, so now let's do something about the base. Now what I'm going to use is this stuff. It's called Sculpt Mold. It's basically plaster and paper mix. It's really simple, all you do is add water. Mix it until it's mixed through, slap it on, let it dry. Now I'm also going to be adding a little bit of paint to this because you're meant to be able to add paint to it so that if it does end up ever getting cracked or anything like that I shouldn't have too much problem otherwise it'll just be stark white and it'll look like crap now at the time of this video sculpted mold is relatively difficult to get a hold of from what I've heard so if you want to get a hold of this stuff and you're in Australia Officeworks has something similar called Sculpted Modeling Mix or Modeling Compound or something. It's basically the same thing. Uh, you have to buy it in 10 kilo box though, that's the only catch with it. And the box, it's I think $70 at the time of this video for the 10 kilos, so it actually works out much cheaper per kilogram than Sculptor Mold. If you're in the UK, uh, Luke's APS, I think his website is geekgaming.co or something. Um, just Google Geek Gaming and it'll come up. He has his own modeling compound as well. Basically the same thing as this. He also has a video on how to make it. And if I remember, I will link it up there in the cards. Now, as per usual, I didn't add enough water and I'll probably end up adding too much water now. So I'll be back once this is all actually mixed in and ready to be applied. Alright, I'm back. I've got a nice 
relatively thin sludge, which wasn't what I was going for, because it'll take a lot longer to dry when it's thinner. But you really you want to go for something that's like oatmeal, because that way it'll dry relatively quickly. And I also forgot to mention the paint that I added is a burnt umber, which has turned this lovely grey colour. But whatever, it's better than the white. Now to apply this, it's very simple. Slap it on. You don't have to be pretty about it because you can fix it later. Now when you apply it and start moving it around, it's going to be all lumpy and crappy and not very nice. But, as it starts to dry, you can make it smooth or smoother by wetting your finger and just rubbing it down. see I've made a gigantic mess but that's fine not a problem so I'll wait for this to dry a little bit and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to smooth it so now let's start adding the dirt so what I have here glue paintbrush container with a stocking on it that is full of a dirt and tile grout mixture. Now the reason for the tile grout in the dirt is to lighten it because when you start adding glue and things on top of it it's going to get very very dark very quickly. Another reason for the tile grout is once it's wet and then it dries it sets solid. Now once I apply the glue and the dirt and that dries I'm going to spray it down with 70% isopropyl alcohol. This is a, to be used as a wetting agent, which you'll see in the coming steps as well once we start doing grass and other things. Basically what it does is it, it lets this mixture of glue and water absorb into the dirt and the grass and everything rather than just sitting on top. So instead of it just sitting on top and it making a mask, it will soak into it and it will create a shell, essentially. But we don't need that at the moment. For right now, a bit of glue. A bit too much glue. When you do this, you only want to work in smaller areas because this glue can dry very quickly, especially if you're in a hot climate like I am. Not currently, anyway, because it's winter here in Australia. But normally in summer, this stuff will start drying. Like once I start spreading it out, it's very annoying. So, bunch of glue. Get it in all the little cracks and everything now this is where it can get messy and where you'll probably end up finding dirt everywhere but you just sprinkle it on and the stocking acts as a strainer sort of filter so you only get the really fine lot of dirt but as you can probably see it's kind of going everywhere basically it. 
and then you let this dry give it a couple hours or so let it fully dry spray it with the isopropyl until it's nice and wet and then spray it with your glue and if your glue end up pull pull if the glue ends up pulling up what you can do is take it at the edge of a paper towel and just dip it in and let it suck up the let the paper towel suck up the glue so you don't you're not left with a massive spot of glue in there but I will go around the rest of the diorama and finish doing this while making a gigantic mess in my room so now I'm going to show you how I'm making these trees before I actually start showing anything though I just want to say I'm not happy with these trees and I probably will end up remaking them the only reason I'm showing it is for completeness so I'm using sticks that are glued together in a rough tree shape I'm using this stuff which is called sea foam because it looks kind of tree branch like I'm also using some stupid glue and some accelerator it's really simple all I'm doing a bit of stupid glue on the twig stay in shot would be helpful sea foam spray it with the accelerator because I'm incredibly impatient stick it on sort of kind of if it'll go on a little bit more super glue to reinforce it because this stuff's pretty fragile and it's easy to snap off and then because I'm really impatient accelerator and don't worry about it going white I'm going to repaint this entire tree anyway so I will finish doing this for the rest of it and I'll be back so now as you can see the tree's pretty much done but it looks like crap because of where the accelerator is so I'm going to paint it and I've already mixed up my paint it is apple barrel melted chocolate pewter grey and a tiny bit of bright yellow and all I'm going to do is slap it on so let's do that this is also watered down quite a bit because I don't want it to fill in any of the um, gaps and cracks and things like that in the bark so I'll have to go over these white bits a couple of times ordinarily you just airbrush this but I can't be asked pulling the airbrush out and setting it up for what will be a two second job so I'll just brush paint it alright so now the tree's painted and I didn't paint the um, sea foam because I couldn't be bothered pulling out the airbrush and brush painting it's basically impossible but it's painted brown and hopefully you can see that there's a light grey dry brushing I don't think the camera's going to pick it up very well but it's dry brushed so now it's time to start adding foliage and I'm going to use this stuff this is Woodland Scenics Polyfiber it's basically just green polyester fibre same stuff you find in teddy bears um, you can try dyeing this yourself but it's really hard so it's easier just buying it and what I've done is I've already teased some out so it's nice and thin and I'm going to attempt to hook it on some of the sea foam and see how well this goes uh, I'm not going to bother gluing it or anything not yet anyway because the strands should just hook onto the sea foam without too much of a problem. Now let's 
let's get on to the more fun stuff, static grass. So, Mod Podge, I'm only going to work in a small area again. And I want to make sure that it doesn't go onto the road. Don't worry, I'll bring the camera down in a minute and give you a better view of what I'm doing. But just to give you a rough idea. Now I have my ghetto homemade static grass applicator. This is a mix of Woodland Scenics 7mm medium green and dark green as well as a mix of I think medium green and dark green 3mm I can't remember exactly basically negative charge of the static grass applicator on here that goes on the base positive charge is on here and that causes the static grass to be when you drop it out the negative charge makes it fixed to the um, base positive charge pulls it up so it stands and you'll see that in a minute but all I'm going to do negative charge there hold the button you might be able to hear it going Got to be careful because this is 20 kilovolt and I don't want it shorting out because it hurts when it shorts out and zaps you. And I'm out of grass. So let me move the camera and I'll give you a closer look at what's going on. All right. So now that you're in close, let's see if I can get this on camera without making a massive mess. Hopefully you can see it's standing up. Gets stuck on the cable sometimes inside of the applicator. So now the grass is done and looks pretty good, I think. But I'm not finished yet. It looks alright, but it doesn't look realistic because there's not enough random crap on the ground. So, to achieve the random crap, I'm going to use knock leaves, light green, medium green, dark green, woodland scenics, weed, and burnt turf, foam stuff, uh, woodland scenics flowers, some ground up brownish dead leaves and ground up greenish leaves and yeah I'm gonna scatter that everywhere basically and make an ungodly mess. Now I'm gonna speed this up because it's gonna take a while and it's gonna be really boring and I'll be back I think that looks pretty good for the first go. So I'll fix all this in place and then I'll be back with bushes, sticks, twigs, rocks, other things that need to be fixed down properly. But the way I'm going to fix this down is the same as I fixed the dirt, isopropyl, watered down PVA, let it dry. So 
I'll be back once this is all dry. So now I've done all the leaves, that's all glued in. I've also added rocks and sticks and things everywhere. I've got another one down, down there to make it look like it's a fallen tree. There's rocks down there, there's little rocks and twigs and crap everywhere. So as you can see now, I've got these things which are meant to be bushes. Exactly the same as the trees, sea foam, polyfiber, clump foliage, yada yada yada. Uh, two of these are made out of wire. I don't know how well you're going to see this. I bunched up a, bu a bit of wire, painted it, and thought I'd try that for bushes, but I don't think they're going to work too well. But we'll see. So now I'm going to stick these down. And what I'm going to use is this canopy glue. The reason I'm using this is because it's really easy to pull it off. Just in case I don't like the placement of these in the future or they get in my way when I'm trying to put the building in place. So, yeah, I'm going to glue these in. So, yeah, the placement of these is just temporary, it's not set in stone, they probably will be moved, which is why I was using the tacky glue so that I can remove them in the future, and just move them around. So, now I'm going to show, I'm going to put in the trees, I'm only going to do one tree fixed permanently, because I'm probably going to knock in all the rest off, and the rest will also get in my way when I go to put the building in. So, let me move the camera, and I'll do that. Special treat for you. Macro mode. Nobody breathe, the camera will wobble. So, now I'm going to glue the tree in. And I'm going to do use the same glue that I used on the bushes, which is this tacky glue. I'm going to put a tiny bit on the trunk. Which I'm doing right now. Obviously you can't see that. And then I'm going to stick the tree in the hole. Now there's glue left over. It looks pretty ugly. But that's fine because I'm going to take some of the really fine dirt that I use for the road. And I'm going to build up the base of the tree a little bit. If I can scoop some of the, glue, the dirt out. do this all the way around the tree and if you're wondering what I'm using to scoop the dirt out with and place it this is just a paint stirrer I like it because it's got a little it's got a little cup thing on it spoon thing Just a little bit more of the leaves. These are the green leaves, the ground up ones. And some of the dead ones. Now to fix this in place, I'm going to use isopropyl and watered down Mod Podge again. And these things that I'm using to put them in place with, uh, using for the Mod Podge and the isopropyl, these are needle applicator bottles. 
You can find them really cheap on eBay and I think on Amazon as well. These are so much easier than messing with pipettes and potentially doing way too much glue, which is what I've done. But whatever. This is why I have a tissue handy. And we'll just soak up a little bit of the excess. Alright, and that's how we fix a tree into place. As I said, I'm not going to do any of the other trees. This is the only one, just because when I actually put the building in and everything, it's going to be a hassle. So, I think we're done. Now, when I first did the dirt, I said that this dirt had tile grout in it. I was wrong. I grabbed the wrong container. But I was going to do this anyway. So to give this a little bit more colour and make it look more realistic, I've got some soft pastels that I've scraped up, mixed in sort of like a dark brown, a red and a tan-ish colour. And I'm going to just do that on the road. What I'm doing is I'm putting a little bit down the middle, gently, and then I'm just trying to feather it out. I don't know if the camera is picking it up all that well. And as you can see, the base is more or less finished for this video anyway. As a, the thing at the start said, this is a work in progress. I will be rebuilding the trees because they look atrocious. I don't like any of them at all. But that won't be obviously in this video. That'll be probably outside of a video. I'll just do it and update photos on Instagram. As far as the rest of it, it needs more plants, needs more just crap on the ground everywhere. And I think I need to redo the road a little bit. I might paint it because the pastels didn't work the greatest. But that will be for another time. Now, as for the building, if the video is already done by the time you're watching this, there'll be a link to it in the cards in the top right hand corner. And yeah, if you like the video, give us a like, give us a sub, all that other whiny crap. If you didn't like the video, I don't particularly care to be honest. Alright, see ya.